machine was acquired in pieces by Philadelphia's Franklin Institute at the turn of the century. At the time, it was not known who actually built the device until the curators got the automaton writing. When we got the machine rebuilt and started reading out from its program, the last poem that it writes says down at the bottom of the poem, écrit par l'automat de Mayodé, written by Mayodé's automaton. Another famous automaton of the period was Wolfgang von Kempelen's Turk chess player. This machine toured the world, challenging people to chess matches. The automaton even had the audacity to defeat Napoleon himself. Ultimately, though, with the help of Edgar Allan Poe, the automaton was revealed as a bizarre hoax. As it turned out, a chess-playing midget secretly climbed inside the device and operated the Turk's hands. Meanwhile, in the Orient, Chinese and Japanese inventors were also creating impressive automatons, such as the spring-driven Japanese tea doll. What's amazing about the mechanisms is before the Japanese had total control over flexible metals and things of that kind, they made use of bamboo. They made the first walking dolls completely out of bamboo, including the springs. The springs were bamboo springs. 1816 marked a critical milestone in robot history when the novelist Mary Shelley visited Switzerland and viewed the Droz automatons. The machines inspired her to write her classic novel, Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus, the story of a robot-like creature given life, but then running out of control. Mary Shelley, in one fell swoop with one book, created the whole concept in the modern world of the threat of technology. The, the concept that, that things like robots, automatons, and automation and computers can be a negative force if we don't control them. Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Oh, Shelley's frightening vision became the defining concept in robots until the 1940s. As science expanded the capabilities of the machines, science fiction literature and film warned us of the threat that robots posed. The idea of a mechanical person was always interesting to the movie makers and to the storytellers because when you have a mechanical being, it becomes soulless. And if it's soulless, then it can be ultimate evil. Media told us the evil machines of the mad scientists would not be content to be our servants. Their goal was to become our masters. Robots will return in a moment here on the History Channel. It is a place where power isn't flaunted, but instead quietly asserted. Because sometimes a whisper can say all the right things. Park Avenue by Buick, the power of understatement. MCI Five Cent Sundays. Cut! I need passion, depth, I need intensity. MCI Five Cent Sundays, five cents a minute Cut! every Sunday. Think big, think Shakespeare. Five cents a minute every Sunday. Five cents a minute every Sunday. I ask for an actor, they send a comedian. Call 1-800-SUNDAYS to become an MCI customer. Again? Call 1-800- At BASF, we don't make the mattress. We make it softer. We don't make the boots, we make them drier. We don't make the house, we make it livelier. We don't make the snowboard, we make it stronger. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. 
BASF. I don't want to buy a new PC every year till commencement. I needed one that would keep up with them. Gotta save something for college. Let's talk about your wear. Call 1-800-GATEWAY and we'll custom build your kids a PC with an Intel processor and CD-ROM. Now for only $9.99. Or with the Your Wear program, it's just $28 a month. And in two years, you can trade it in toward the purchase of a new one. Do you guys make sneakers? Call us now and let's talk about Your Wear from Gateway. At GEICO, we settle claims quickly so you can get your car back because no one likes to bum a ride to work. <laughs> GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Paying too much for car insurance isn't any smarter. GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Electronic hands that grab, limbs that sense and feel. Prosthetics. Monday at 10 Eastern, 11 Pacific on an all new Modern Marvels. Covert operations behind enemy lines. It's dirty work. It is the most sophisticated and most dangerous kind of a cat and mouse game in the world. These men do it for the challenge. They go in with finely honed techniques to gather intelligence and maximize firepower. Then get out fast. They are the Green Berets on the warrior tradition. Monday at 9 Eastern, 10 Pacific on the History Channel. The History Channel now returns to robots. Technologies developed in the 19th century led to immense leaps in the capabilities of automatons. Around 1800, Primitive machine memory was demonstrated by Joseph Chicard's loom, which could weave intricate designs from instructions stored on hundreds of wooden cards. He even wove a pattern of his own self-portrait, and it was incredibly detailed. He created a programmable device somewhat similar to the CAM type of programmable device of the Droz. In 1833, the Englishman Charles Babbage built the first primitive computer. His analytical engine was a mechanical device also crafted with brass gears and cams. The machine was designed to store and calculate 1,050 digit numbers. But this was the age of electricity, and the spark that brought Frankenstein's monster to life was now powering realistic automatons. In 1876, a life-sized automaton band performed for enthusiastic audiences. By the late 1800s, Thomas Edison used the technology developed for his new phonograph to produce talking dolls that sang, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Edison's popular invention launched a new industry in talking toys. Meanwhile, George Moore demonstrated the first machine to walk on two legs. His tin man walked in circles powered by a half horsepower steam engine. The vision of creating human-like robots was moving closer to reality. In the 20th century, Writers and filmmakers throughout the world continued the theme of machines running out of control. In 1920, Italian filmmaker Andre Deed created a remarkably advanced idea for a robot in his film, L'Uomo Meccanico, The Mechanical Man. In science fiction, the machines were able to react to their environment independent of their makers. This is the attribute that separates true robots from automatons. Nineteen twenty-one brought another landmark event. Czech playwright Karl Chopek wrote Rosum's Universal Robots, RUR. This was the first use of the word robot which Chopek developed in 